Um, what were the antecedents that led to this accusation? Right. So, Did so that's spiral the out of control. That was the big question. So, given that this was not an American phenomenon, unfortunately, the big question is is how and why did it happen and why did it happen when it did and so it, it, it seems to me that there are four or five factors that are that are really important one of them is immigration so messina puts itself on the map at the beginning of the 19th century because it becomes the home of a huge alcoa aluminum smelting plant and aluminum sets up a plant there because of the, the hydroelectric potential of the St. Lawrence River. But this is a very sparsely populated part of the world. It's still very sparsely populated. And so Alcoa needed workers. And so they literally sent agents to Ellis Island to recruit people off the boat. And I was able in the archives to find a lot of information about the, the, the people, the immigrants who went to work for Alcoa. Very many of them came from places in Europe where there had been ritual murder accusations in the late 19th and early, early 20th century. The other great source, the greatest source actually, of, of workers for Alcoa was Canada, because you're right there on the border and Quebec is five miles away. And a, a huge percentage of uh, foreigners who came to work for Alcoa were from, from Quebec. And when I looked into the situation in Quebec in the first couple of decades of the 20th century, I saw that it was there was just a huge amount of anti-Semitism, including some really notorious ritual murder accusations against the, the Jewish community, the tiny Jewish community of Quebec City. And then in Montreal in the 1920s, there were a couple of mass circulation newspapers published, newspapers that were explicitly anti-Semitic. That is their editorial line was about hatred of the Jews. And so my argument then is that the immigrants who came from Central and Eastern Europe and who came from Quebec were primed to believe Jews capable of committing these kinds of acts. And so I think that these groups were, were vectors of the, of the accusation, bringing it from Europe and from Canada where it had existed before the 20th century and into the beginning of the 20th century. But then that still leaves open the question, well, why was this crazy idea plausible to the Christian community of Messina? And there, I, I think there are a couple of other factors. One of them, is the massive revival of the Ku Klux Klan. You know, everybody knows that the Ku Klux Klan was founded during Reconstruction and after Reconstruction was over, it, it subsided. But in the 1920s, that organization was revived, so much so that in 1924, the Klan had 4 million members nationwide. And the Klan in the 1920s was really more anti-Catholic and anti-Jewish than it even was anti-Black. And I think that's partly because there were plenty of other organizations that were devoted to hostility to, to African-Americans. And, and so the main target of the Klan was Catholics and then secondarily Jews. And so the stuff that came out in, in Klan publications, which had millions of readers, horrible anti-Semitic stuff, including the notion that Jews commit acts of ritual murder. Then there's another factor, a another really big one, and, and that is the influence of Henry Ford. 